Let's get on your feet. Give it up for the queen bee herself. Give it up for Danielle Corbett. In the morning, fever when you hold me tight. Fever. What's up, New Jersey, you sexy motherfuckers? It's you all gorgeousness. Thank you so much for coming out again to see me. I thought you guys would have had enough already. You guys are suckers for punishment. I'm gonna punish you all. I hear you've been bad. <laughs> uh, who is here for the first time ever? Uh, welcome, welcome. I hope you have a great time and that you meet lots of lovely new friends. These conventions have been known to pair people up. So who's single? Who wants to get down? So you guys can have a little mingle over there later on. We can do a little uh, Wentworth Con Tinder spin thing. <laughs> now, I know that I'm being a little bit maverick here. Um, I just want to say thanks to Scott, who's usually up on stage and has to bear me. Uh, running around and, and not letting him speak. So, Scott, wherever you are in the house, thank you. Uh, I also, <laughs> he's having a meal back there. I just want to acknowledge my beautiful friend, Bernie, as well, who I fired because uh, I just want to be up here by myself. <laughs> Gives me a chance. <laughs> uh, and also, I would like to say thank you so much to Kiana and the Wentworth Con team <laughs> for getting us here. It is no easy feat. We are not allowed to waltz in here into your country willy-nilly. We have to get visas and uh, undergo boot camps. We have to get piercings in part of our body that we never should have. <laughs> we get marked, we get sparked, we get spanked. So, <laughs> for us to be here uh, it does take, it takes a, a very great village and, and that village being went with Con and Kiana. Um, so thank you, honey. Because, um, please sit down. You can sit down now. I'll get you standing up later. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that because I love you for uh, still supporting the show and you know, rallying around the cast and creatives uh, and each other uh, because it does become one big family, doesn't it? I hope, you, I hope you leave here this weekend, after this weekend, feeling like you've made some really great connections and, uh, you know, like you've... Well, oh, have you already? Have you guys already? Are you, like, getting... Are you... Do tell. There'll be a little private booth over there. I'm just in through that curtain there. You can come and tell me your confessions. I'll be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, ooh. And well, then what happened? Hmm? And then what happened? And then? <laughs> no, I know there are people lining up to ask me questions. Uh, look, I'll tell you what. I'll help you get off your feet. I'll answer them for you. Firstly, my favourite scene I shot was... Uh, <laughs> Was a scene. <laughs> was the scene that I shot with uh, Nicole De Silva, who plays Frankie Doyle, in the visitors' room because we hadn't seen each other for a long time, and so it was really great to actually see her. So I wasn't really acting. That was great. Number two, the most difficult scene I shot <laughs> was uh, when I when B had to hang herself from the door because uh, it was physically exhausting. And oh shit, did I shave? Not that I care, but it's getting a bit smelly, like, oof. Um, because uh, it's, I was, I guess for me, I was thinking about all of those people in the world who either on the cusp of making that choice or, ha or have, or are in that situation. Not, not a particularly uh, nice experience for anyone that's been in that space or who's been affected by someone who's in that space. Uh, so I really felt that kind of weight of, of portraying that. It was really difficult. Number three, no, I haven't slept with a llama. <laughs> Just waiting to see if anyone sits down if that's their question. 
but I have slept with the father of my children. <laughs> Boo! Uh, and lots of other people in between. Now, um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kidding. You, you can keep it. I'll tell you why I've answered those questions. Because I do it without a respect for Wentworth Com and you all who probably want to come here and only hear uh, things about um, being in Wentworth, I feel at this point I've kind of answered everything. So I have nothing that's off limits. You can stand there and go, oh shit, I've been preparing this question for a week. What am I going to ask her now? But um, I like to be an open book. I think there's some really interesting conversations to have in a space with this many people and great minds. So you can ask me whatever you like. How's that? If I don't like it, if I feel uncomfortable, I'll just say no. I've just had a beautiful round table with them, a fantastic group of, where are my round tables? Yay! Um, and I offered the same to them as well. So uh, without any respect to, uh, disrespect to other people who don't want to be asked um, open questions, I, on the other hand, I think it's really nice to share open ideas and throw them out into the world. So who's first? Oh, Hi. Hi there, Danielle. My name is actually Danielle, too. <laughs> um, Great name. <laughs> um, you are my favorite actress, bar none. I just, oh, I love B, Queen B. Um, I'm wondering, do you feel strongly connected to your character as an actress? Do you feel like you're very similar or very different from your character as B? Uh, I think with all characters I play, um, I find a similarity. I'll try to find the 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 things that are the same. Because I can't play a character if I don't feel some kind of connection with that, with that person. So that's why, and for me it's about, it doesn't matter what character I'm playing, I, I believe the best performances are the most authentic. Now they can still be heightened and arch and villainous, but if you play them authentically, that's what we get drawn to. So. Uh, I think for B, it was like I felt very similarly to her about Deb, how she felt about Debbie and being a mum. I feel that same way about my kids. So that was something that I could um, connect to. Yeah. Thank Does that you. answer your question? And also she had great yes. hair. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> I'm really angling for like a hair commercial now. I've grown my hair back. I managed to grow out those bloody shaved sides. They took me so long. And I, I was like, has anyone done that yet in this room? Yeah, shave sides and had to grow it out yet? Ooh, ooh. Don't do it. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is Tori. Um, first, I want to thank you for the cameo you made me for my 21st birthday. It was so funny. I love it. Second um, is an actory question. I'm curious about what your process is like for preparing for a role and how is developing the role of B different from other roles you've booked in the past? Uh, thank you, Tori. And for those of you who don't know, Cameo was a little, this is my side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Cameo is a little video thing where you can get a shout out from me for like a wedding or an anniversary or just a, because you think someone's really great. So that's what a cameo is. Um, so how do I prepare? Um, it varies. It varies from, sub, uh, from project to project. Sometimes I'm really, really invested in, uh, in the character, especially if they are uh, a, a real character, like a real, sorry, a real person. So then I'll do as much research as I can uh, to try and get into the skin of that, that person and um, how they speak and their rhythms. Um, other times, I'm really lazy. I just, I turn up to set and I see what other people are bringing and I respond to that. I don't have a, any particular method to my work. I find, I, I, although I've got some things in my life that I really like, routine, I actually like fucking it up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, oh goodness, I'm so sorry if there's anyone here who doesn't like swearing. <laughs> Leave now, fuck the labels. <laughs> fuck the fucking. I mean, fuck the swearing. Anyway, uh, no, because I just want to warn you, I do swear a lot. So for all of those under age, you can go and talk to my son because he'll tell you, yeah, yeah, the swear jar's really full. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Is that someone's phone? Can I answer it? Hello? Uh, I, 
I feel like the um, the process does change for me a lot. I, like once again, though, it's it's about being as connected to the people around me that I work with as much as the um, to me being connected to the character. Uh, and I don't know. I think for me, it's just uh, I just I feel like we are full of so many experiences, all of us. Doesn't matter whether you've just stayed home all your life or you've been out and you know travelled the whole world. We actually innately know things. We know experiences, and I just allow that to come forward. I'm like, I, I think I know what this feels like, and I think that's what acting is. You know, it's about trusting your instincts, and and it's hard to trust our instincts sometimes. I'm terrible at trusting my instincts. I've just got me into a lot of trouble, but I'm getting better. It's important, you know. Don't you think? You know, how many times has your body said, "Oh," and you go, "No, no, I'll do it anyway," and then it's like, "Uh oh." Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Anyway. Does Thank that answer you. your question? Yeah. Good, I'll meet you later. <laughs> Next? Yes, hi. Oh, no, no. <laughs> hi, Danielle. So I'm just checking you all out. <laughs> spunky bunch of... Hi, Danielle. I'm glad you're feeling better today. Thank you. All right. So, um... My question is, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the work that you do with mental health. Uh, I think it's a big conversation that needs to, to come to light a lot. And what I want to know is how did you get interested in that? And how has um, your own life experience contributed to that? Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I think, you know, like mental health, uh, the conversation, I think it's kind of out there now, don't you think? Not I think a, it is. It's kind not of enough. Not Do enough. you think? Not, yeah. Okay. I feel like there's a well. Then I'm, I've obviously got really small circles, <laughs> um, but you know, okay. Uh, uh, respect of that. Um, I think uh, you know my my personal journey with my own mental health has been confusing and radical, and uh, you know, I, I think you know anything that I've experienced will be something that um, propels me into. Uh, looking at that sector or, you know, um, supporting others or reaching out because I feel like one of the greatest things, the most greatest um, panis not panaceas for mental health, one of the greatest acts you can do for yourself when you're being challenged by your own mental health is to reach out to others because, um, and, and look for acts of service. It'll be really hard but I think it's an incredibly important thing to do because I've noticed that what happens in my own mental health when I get stuck inside that space, I become very self-obsessed because it's the only thing that's going on. So what I've chosen to do, and this is only my journey, is to reach out to try and help others. And I think that's why I help others a lot because it alleviates some of my own challenges. You know, like I can wake up one day, I'll, I'll stand up here now and be like, yeah, I feel really great because I'm actually talking to you. I'm, I'm listening to all of you. I'm, you know, I'm engaged in something. Sometimes when I'm at home alone, I'll be like, oh, I don't feel great. I don't think I'm the best thing ever at all. I feel very challenged sometimes and I feel very confused by the world and what's it all about? And then that spirals and spirals and spirals. And I'm like, okay, now I need to go and do something else. So that's why I help, especially um, you notice a lot of the charities or movements I work with are child-centric um, because I think if you can support children at that age, that, that very impressionable time, when they're learning about self-esteem and being able to put, put things in place, regardless of whether their parents or caregivers are able to support them, it might just take the kindness of a stranger or, or a teacher or someone else in the family or close-knit that can help that person form a greater sense of themselves later on in life. And then that help, that's a great help to the whole community, you know? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to clap me. Clap yourselves. I mean, you're, if, you, if you are clapping now for me, you get that. And if you get it, that means you're doing it too. So give yourself a pat on your own backsides from me. Hi. Hi. How are you? I've got to stop using natural deodorant. It sucks. It's Hello. not good. Okay, sorry, hi. Sorry, hi. Didn't want to interrupt you. You can keep talking about your deodorant if you like. But it's... I do Don't invite me, because I probably will. <laughs> Fair enough. My name's Chanel. I'm from Delaware. Um, I just had a question about, in season two, while you were in 
prison, you know, B's still trying to be B, you know, figure out who she is there. And your main drive was Debbie. Uh, I know Debbie wasn't a big character in it, so um, nobody really knows Georgia Flood. But I want to know with um, after season two and after all of that, if you guys still had an outside relationship um, because she was such your center of focus, you know, like that was your daughter. Um, so I was wondering if after all of that, uh, if you guys continued to have a relationship, you know, if you guys still have that mom-daughter thing going on and, you know, how all of that stuff was doing, you know, how, how's Debbie doing? Oh, that's the, that's the question. How's Debbie doing? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, when did the dragons appear? Like, are there dragons? Yeah. Does the freak come out? What's going on? Th thanks, Chanel. Um, <laughs> is there any time left? Okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh, no, I don't see Georgia. Uh, you find most on jobs. Yes, I've, you, you make a lot of friends. Obviously, I see a couple of the folk from there. But, you know, Wentworth wasn't the only show I've ever worked on. It's one of many. One of, you know, 50, 60 shows I've worked on. And generally, it's like, you, 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 you arrive on the set, you create a really magical thing and then you kind of move on to the next job. It's like being a gypsy. It's like being an acting gypsy. So, no, I don't, I'm not, I don't have any maternal relationship with Debbie at all. I don't, um, I'm sure if I saw her, I'd give her a massive squeeze. And I'd be like, you're alive! <laughs> Yay! Um, but I don't have, um, you know, it's, those kinds of relationships generally end a lot of the time when you leave a show. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Danielle. I'm Michelle. Um, first, I just want to say I thought you were the baddest bitch with the, sh with the shaved um, sides. I just want to throw that out there. Um, but I just wanted to ask, like, if you could have a perfect ending to, like, B. Smith's character, like a perfect ending to, you know, your character in the show, what would it have been and why? Uh, okay, so B. Smith. Okay, what about this? Um, Cut to B. Smith sneaking into the freak's house, <laughs> finding the goldfish, <laughs> giving it like little fishy CPR. <laughs> like, ooh, 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 ooh. is it staying alive? Is it staying alive? <laughs> and then, like, and like, and then the fish lives, and then you just see B and the fish walking happily off into the sunset together. <laughs> and she calls the goldfish Debbie. Good enough for me. Yeah? No? I like it. <laughs> That's a spin-off. <laughs> I'm just thinking about the little kind of... Like, how do you give gold for CPR? Do you, like, just... Hello. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shani, and uh, I'm a little nervous. I wanted to say thank you for making such a show with so much emotion that brought me and my parents who, uh, that's not their kind of show, they don't like cursing <laughs> and violence, but they absolutely love it and they love B and they love Ferguson and my dad calls me a freak every time I wear my Ferguson shirt. <laughs> and so thank you for bringing me and my family and my friends together with a, a wonderful show with so much emotion. I was devastated about Debbie. I had a boyfriend who died of a heroin overdose and I had to, I had to stop watching it for a while. But, I, of course, I had to keep watching it. But anyway, my question might be a bit boring, but as a, as a hairdresser, I want to know how much or how little goes into the hair and the makeup. Not just for you, for everyone. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, and, wow, it sounds like you've got a lot in common with the show, so I, it's I probably no surprise that you have connected to it. And I'm sorry to hear about your um, Thank you. partner, ex-partner. Um, Look, there wasn't a lot of makeup on me, <laughs> thankfully, because, uh, you know, I, I used to have to get my hair dyed every three weeks. Uh, and, you know, I, and then I had to throw out everything white in my house because white sheets, white towels, white everything, because it would just stain all the sheets. Um, but, uh, yeah, not a lot of makeup. I mean, this, this has been photoshopped to within an inch of its life, this photo. <laughs> like, if I look like that now, I wouldn't be up here. I'd be knocking on Italian Vogue's door, babes. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's a stupid amount of Photoshop. Like, the machine was positively exploding after they did this. <laughs> they were like, oi, what's going on over there? Oh, I'm just Photoshopping Danielle's face. 
Um, <laughs> I um, had to have a few scars added every, you know, season. <laughs> that was about it. But I think with everyone else, you know, like there's, there was a, for me it was always, um, I, I, I put a lot of work into my characters with the other creatives, like the stuff that I don't have control over just myself. Because Wentworth is not just, we're not the sum of Wentworth. Um, it's, it's made, you know, my character was written by, created by, styled by, you know, done all this with a lot of other people. So I'm not just B. Smith, a whole lot of other people are. Thank and you. I draw inspiration from them too. So, you know, like I, I asked a lot for when I first arrived, my costumes to be really ill-fitting because she didn't fit into prison. By season two and season three, you know, she had the muscle t-shirts on. <laughs> And ready for, ready for war. And then by season four, you might notice the clothes got a bit more daggier again and looser and the hair got lighter and she didn't really care anymore. And that was, to me was an indication of her kind of fading as well. So. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hey. Hi, Danielle. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm Cheyenne. Hi, Cheyenne. I just wanted to know what was your favorite fight scene to film? Uh, well, the only one I can really remember, I think, is the one with Frankie. Frankie. Yeah, yeah, because it was so long. And that, I think that fight scene had about two minutes cut out of it as well. Oh. It was much longer than what it ended up being on screen, which was like, oh, what? I did all of that work. <laughs> and I, oh, okay. Um, but Nicole actually did get really injured in that fight. I think you would have known this. Um, and, yeah, I, I think there's a moment where she gets pushed through the... Um, the dryer door, yeah. that actually wasn't supposed to happen. Did you do it? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that bitch up. She get in my face. <laughs> and that was part of the master plan, yeah? That was in season, uh, season two? Season two. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was part of the, what are you laughing at? Oh my God, are my knickers hanging out or something? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, speaking of knickers. I think that there were people yesterday very confused about what I was wearing, yeah. so I'm going to dis discuss them with you. So, I know that some of you weren't here yesterday, but you probably saw the photos and you're like, what is she wearing? So, I, I was wearing these little guys. It's a little kind of... Suspendery thing. I like it. <laughs> it's my homage to, I don't know, Madonna in the 90s when she looked good. Um, and I do like looking a bit weird sometimes, giving you all a conversation starter. If they didn't stink so much, I'd throw that into the audience. <laughs> so those are my little undie things I was wearing yesterday. Thanks for asking. Good night. Goodbye. See you later. Thank you. Uh, hi, hi. I'm Vicky. Um, I just want to tell you, like, you're incredible. The, what you did bringing B. Smith to the screen was incredible. You were only on half the show, but you are Wentworth. Woo! Always. You're amazing. <laughs> well, okay, so I'm going to walk away from here. I'm about to fit through the door because my head's going to be so big. But I didn't just want to flatter you. I have a question. Um, <laughs> no, you can stop right there. I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> what was it like filming with, with Pamela when you guys were going chin to chin? It had to be intense. Well, it wasn't chin to chin. It was chin to forehead. Fair, fair. That bitch be tall. <laughs> I even put on shoes like this and she was still up there. <laughs> it was very strange, and I've said this before, when you're trying to exert power over someone, the tendency is to, is to stand tall and you want to look down on them. So that line of me saying, you don't run this prison, I do, it was like, oh, okay. This is going to take a whole lot of acting power to try to, you know, convince this woman that I'm the one that has the upper hand here.
because it's all about status. It's very, very hard to pull someone down to your level when they're physically towering over you. Um, but I think it worked. You fucking nailed it. Thank you so much. She's formidable. Pamela Rabe is, is a formidable, formidable actress. Uh, actor, actress. Uh, however, she's incredibly funny in real life. She's not like that. She's, she's um, uh, irreverent and, and just clever and naughty and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, but that's a testament to her uh, acting prowess, you know, that she can be so powerful and, and villainous and then in real life just be sitting in the corner playing Candy Crush. <laughs> I'll be back. Hi, Dan. <laughs> I'm Mel. Up here, I've got the noise, so it sounds like it's coming from everywhere, not from <laughs> over there. I'm like, woo. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Mel. Thanks for the meet and greet earlier. It was so much fun. I know you mentioned uh, that you liked the L word, and I wanted to know who your L word crush is, and also if you were in the L word, what kind of character do you think you'd play? Wow. Oh, um, so who, who watches the L word here? Woo! Oh, quite a few. Um, I always wanted to be on that show. I thought I would have been really hot on that show. Yeah. I mean, not hot, hot, but just like hot. Uh, <laughs> like hot. Um, I was like, um, I really love Pam Greer's character, the one behind the bar, because I thought she was really cool. I can't remember the names of everyone now. Kit. Kit, thank you. But Jennifer Beale's character was awesome. What was her name? Bet. Bet Porter. Bet Porter. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I think Shane was kind of like, yeah, because she kind of had that, they'll probably be they now, yeah? Maybe? I don't know. No? Um, uh, really just kind of, you know, had, was full of moxie. And then, and then I was like, no, 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 no. Shane's kind of now second rate to Frankie. I felt like Nick kind of brought a swag to... I mean, they're different, different people, different characters, but there was something very similar to them. Maybe it was a haircut. I don't know. <laughs> it was the energy, too. Energy, yeah. I, I, I actually fell deeply in obsession with Nicole in the first couple of seasons of Wentworth. I would just sit on set and I'd just be like... <laughs> And then she'd catch me and I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, where is she at lunchtime? Where is she? I'll go and sit next to her there. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, we weren't particularly close during Wentworth, you know, which kind of served the characters, I think. Not, not that we weren't, you know, I think it's probably because I was too busy being obsessive that I couldn't actually connect with her. <laughs> But um, it wasn't until afterwards that um, I um, reached out to her to see if she wanted to start a company with me because she's incredibly bright and she's got a great creative mind. And I was like, oh, I want to work with you. And so it's only been then that we've become really, really close. So I, felt, I actually fell in love with her creatively first. It was like, oh, yeah, you're hot. And now I just go, yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, she's amazing. <laughs> I think we need to do a Wentworth Con here with her and I. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kiana. Hi. Hi, my name is Angie. Hi, Angie. Um, I just wanted to know you're my favorite Are you from New Jersey? Show. Yes, I am. I see Angie from New Jersey. Yes. I'm from Woodbridge. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> um, when you died, I was like so heartbroken, first of all. I was a little dramatic. I cried and I couldn't watch it for like two days. And then when I started the first season of season five uh, with Frankie and the gravestone, I was like, oh my God, I can't watch it. Like, it's so sad. Anyways, I got over it, but I watched it. Anyways, when you filmed the last episode of season four, how did you feel like going off the script? Or in your opinion, did you want it to stay in the show or did you want it to get off? Oh, you mean like to getting killed off? Yeah. <laughs> did you want it to stay or did Fucking you want Sarah it to Walker. Be? I'm sorry that you all didn't get a chance to meet Sarah yesterday. I know that a lot of the... 
I mean, obviously what we do on, on the script and on the show is, is because of the writers. Without the writers, we wouldn't have a show. Uh, so I imagine uh, for you there's always a lot of questions around, well, hold on a second, why did they kill B off? And, you know, I can't, I can't really answer that question. I mean, I can now um, because she wanted to go off with a goldfish <laughs> in heaven. Why with the goldfish? You couldn't just leave with Ali? <laughs> because the goldfish is the closest thing to a seahorse. Oh, and okay, see, it wasn't okay. really. See, the goldfish was going to lead her to the seahorse, which will lead her to Ali. But instead, it was the opposite. You were in the water, <laughs> yeah. not Ali. Yeah. Um, uh, I, um, yeah, so Sarah was here yesterday, and, and it, was, it was simply because it was, um, you know, a, a good replacement, or, an, um, you know, because obviously Robbie couldn't be here yesterday. So I was just like, hey, I pitched her. I was like, why don't you bring Sarah here? So, um, uh, yeah, so she did a little bit of writing on season four and had pitched the idea of killing me off, which I only found out about four years into our friendship. She hadn't said anything. <laughs> And then I was talking about being killed off, and she went, oh, yeah, that was a hard one to plot. And I was like, you what? <laughs> you, you were in the plotting room when you... And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Devastating. And she was like, so you want to go to the movies tonight? I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's just talk about this little minor detail of you killing me off the show. <laughs> anyway, no. Um, I was surprised. I was upset. I, I put on my bravest face in the beginning when, he, when I was taken to the office on the Friday afternoon and there'd been a couple of days where there was this kind of weird frisson around the studio and no one was telling me what was going on. And I became like, you know, this, like, I became like the lead in my own bad drama. It was like, what's, what, well, no one tell me what's happening. Like, what, what, and no one was like, and finally I got taken to the producer's office and he said, look, uh, you know that last scene that we wrote? Well, that's not it, but here is the scene. And I had to pull it out of like a yellow envelope. It was like being part of the FBI or something. And then I read it and it was like, yeah, B gets killed and then she gone. And I was like, okay. And my first question was, why? Why do you want to kill her off? And he, was, he just said, look, um, you know, we, it's not you. Which is, you know, when someone says it's not you, you go, oh, it's me. <laughs> it's fucking me. <laughs> but really, it's not you. Oh, God, they've said then it's really not me. Then it definitely is. Um, and I, uh, he, 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 you know, we had a conversation. Anyway, I was like, um, okay, no, no, I get this. I was very mature. You know, characters get killed off. That's an actor's life, is to, you know, play the role that you've been given, whatever's happening to the role. And then I was being so mature. I was like, yeah, yeah, I totally get it, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was like, uh, and I could see he was going, oh, she's being very calm. And he's like, so can I give you a lift to the airport? Because I was flying home to Sydney. I was like, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and I walked out and I got on the plane and then I got home and I still was being really cool and then I, you know, unpacked my bags and then burst out crying. <laughs> and I think I cried all weekend. Yeah. Oh, you think? Way too soon. Well, you know, it's interesting because... You know, sometimes these things ignite a show in lots of ways and they ignite the viewers and it ignites lots of discussion and, yeah, maybe, maybe it was too early. Um, I certainly think that um, it was a really bold choice and, you know, maybe not everyone agreed with it, but it dramatically, I think sometimes a character does come to its, to its end and... Uh, you know, the, the whole point was like, do we just keep playing out the B storyline of her being top dog or not? And she can't live happily ever after with Ali because without any drama, there's no show. You know, nothing goes well in Wentworth. That's why you motherfuckers are all here watching the show. Because you're like, oh, what happens next? Oh my God, she died. What happens? Oh my God, he got beaten up. Not like, oh, they live happily ever after. And oh, no, no, he had a great time. You're here because you're all twisted. You've got rancid minds and you like that stuff happening. 
Look at you all. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, but I certainly feel like it would have been nice to explore the B and Ali relationship a little bit more because I think people love that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, am I over here? Hi, Danielle. Are you panicking that I'm not going to get to you? I, no, I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> um, Please don't I, be nervous. Um, I got a question if Cecilia really was a knitter or if any of you were knitters or crocheters on set, on the show. I'm a maker, so I just Oh, right. No, Celia did learn crocheting. She did, she did crochet. For the show, or she was... No, I think she learned it for the show. Oh, yeah? Uh, it's just, you know, those, those things, a lot of the stuff that happens in, in, in Wentworth, like me drawing pictures or Celia crocheting, was just something for the actors to do. I think a lot of us just bought stuff to the set and started doing it, and then they'd write it in. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So the, the drawing, for example, I was talking about it earlier, uh, I just started doing it because B had nothing to do. <laughs> I was just sitting there going, Debbie, Debbie, where's Debbie? <laughs> Can you please call Debbie? <laughs> Debbie, 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 Debbie. So I needed something to do, so I... I, I asked the art department one day for a pen and paper so B could start drawing and I actually did draw a memorial thing for Debbie and then put that on the wall and then suddenly it was like, oh, actually maybe, you know, my head is like, okay, so her, her work used to be working on people from there up, you know, the head, so she's got a good sense of portraiture perhaps, you know, with cutting hair and, and doing all that. So maybe if I, you know, just include it into a character thing and then they wrote it in. So I had to do it. I was like, oh, not more work. Thank I just you. got shivved in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm over here now, right? Hello Hi. again. Hi. Sorry I screamed at you earlier when I asked for you your pinky. You did? I did. Did I smash you on the face back? You didn't. Oh, we'll try but I love you anyway. Um, I'm Christina from Philly. We had a, a cameo and when I got my tonsillectomy and we did a virtual meet and greet and I saw you in Chi-Town. Um, my, my, one of my best friends is here. Can you just say happy birthday to Adrian? She's 33 today. Hi, Adrian. Stand up. Get up. <laughs> uh, who's, who else's birthday is it? Anyone else's? Wow. So, Adrian, it's your birthday. And... So Adrian and Rosie, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Adrian and Rosie. Happy birthday to you. Have a great day. So um, I had a question about, um, I know you and Nicole have 411. Uh, is it or 411? 411. Um, Who's afraid? I want to know how I can watch it. That's number one, yeah. because I've seen the pictures. I think we all saw the pictures of you guys in bed together. So I need to, I need to know how the United States can see that. <laughs> so um, Nicole and I have got this production company. We're, we're one of our first productions is going to be a theatre production called Who's Afraid? And Nicole and I play a couple in the show. Yeah, we need to see that. No, so. right. Finally. Yes, sir. No, I might, like, I'll probably get COVID just the night before opening night and then won't get to get it on. Um, so, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a play that we're putting on in, in a theatre, a small theatre in Sydney for two weeks. Who's coming to see it? <laughs> Yay, thank you. Thank you for coming all the way down. That's awesome. Um, because it's a theatre production, no, it's not going to be live streamed. Sorry. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things for us to you know, have cameras and, and stream it properly and everything. It's a very small theatre. It's kind of a bit, I think, um, it's difficult. It, it's, uh, what do you call it when you get distracted? Thank you. Um, distracted. And uh, I don't think it'll do it justice. You need to see theatre live in the theatre. Unless, of course, you're doing something like the National Theatre Productions where they have all these different cameras set up and you have a really good vantage point. Um, but the play is about a lesbian couple and a gay couple, male couple, who uh, are trying to have a child together. So it's tackling those issues of, of 
um, parenting with same-sex couples um, and sort of the politics around that and bringing children into a very strange world right now with, you know, pandemics and, and climate change and wars and so forth. And, you know, it, it tackles a lot of those issues. It also tackles thwarted parenting because the, the play is actually based on, or no, I should say riffing on Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. So if you haven't seen that film or play, I highly recommend it. It's old, but it's really fantastic. Okay, and I just wanted to say, long live the queen. <laughs> also, Allie did a wrap up here, and you, we, can you wrap for us before I leave? Because I know I, they're I gonna wrap up. I would never outshine Kate. <laughs> hey, Dan. We've no, I can't do a rap. She's left. the rapper, not me. Hi. Danielle, five Hi, minutes Danielle. left. So either we've got five minutes left. Have we? Yeah. That's so a pisser, isn't it? <laughs> well, so we could do one more question or we can try to do rapid fire to get the last four done. Okay, so rapid fire, rapid fire. Go, go, go. It was a dig. Oh, crap. Okay. So <laughs> I was sitting down there yesterday. By the way, my name's Susan. I'm from Australia. Hi. I can tell by your accent. And when you came out on all fours being led on a leash by Sarah, oh my God, that was just an amazing view. So yesterday I was wearing these ridiculous boots that kept falling down and I was wondering if I could borrow your suspenders. I thought that would be the most polite way to ask to get into your pants. You don't have to ask politely. <laughs> have fun. Did you come all the way from Australia? Oh my goodness. Hi. Uh, my name is Lane. Um, I have a question. Was there any discussion about how to bring you back into the show? Like, yeah, I, d I did actually get written back, and um, I came back as a vision. And um, in Lizzie's, when she was having a, a, a moment, uh, and I was contracted to go back and shoot, and they had the read through, and then they rang me back and they said, "Oh, you know what? Actually, we we're not going to do it." Oh. No, it's fine. I still got paid. <laughs> It was a goldfish, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you dirty bitches. Hi there, I'm Susan. I just wanted to ask about um, you and Nicole in the, uh, I forgot what the name of it was. Um, it's a play that you guys did. Yeah, Who's it's Afraid? The same one we just talked about, where you guys are both in bed with the baby bottles. And mm -hmm. I was just curious on the take on that. Oh, so it's, it's, it's about two, did you listen to the answer? Or were you really nervous, standing really there going, nervous. oh my God, <laughs> I'm waiting for my question, I'm nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. Um, so it's about, it's about two couples having a child together. Okay. Oh, right. darling, I'm so sorry yeah, you missed that. Already asked it, so. <laughs> we can talk about it in the autograph line. Right, thank but thank you. you standing there for all that time waiting. Oh, my goodness. Got I've got some beta one more question down here, and then we've got to wrap it up. But uh, thank you guys why, so much. Why? 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 Who's going to be where? Blame Kiana. Oh, photos. Hi, Danielle. It's me, Ash. We've talked before. Hi, darling. Uh, what song comes to mind when you think of Wentworth that wasn't in Wentworth or was? Um, oh, Adele. Hello. Because, uh. um, <laughs> because part of my character prep for um, B was that she was a complete Adele. Like, that was the music she used to. So, hello. <laughs> you know, that was, that's what she used to groove to in her car when she dropped Dibby off the school. <laughs> so part of, my, part of my character stuff sometimes, like with B, was, okay, I'm, I'm not in the situation of being in prison. She doesn't know this yet, but she's um, a hairdresser. I, I, fortunately, I used to cut all my family's hair. So I, you know, from the age of 10, my mother had me doing weird things with the family. You know, like, I used to have to sew all the buttons on everyone's shirts. And I used to have to cut everyone's hair. It wasn't like, hey, can you unload the dishwasher? It would be like, can you cut your father's hair, please? <laughs> can you sew buttons on your brother's school uniform, thanks? I'm like, what about mowing the lawns? No. You know, stay at home and shine my shoes. Weird. I don't know. It was just weird stuff. Anyway, so I already knew how to cut hair. Um, I love my mum, by the way. Don't, don't think I was torturous. I kind of liked it. Um, so it's... Uh, so I, um, I kind of knew that, but I was like, what, how does she move? How does she, what does she like when she dances? 
you know, she probably dances at home alone when Harry's not around and she can do stuff like that. So I just kind of did little things like that, little sort of um, exploration, um, pra- uh, what do you call it, exercises like that. So it was to Adele. She used to listen to Adele. All right, everybody, give it up for Danielle. Thank you. Have the best time, and I'll see you all. Danielle will be back for the group panel later this afternoon. She's going to head to the photo op room.